Howdy folks. So this is just a, a, a quick note that I want to make. Um, it's uh, sort of related to uh, the last couple of videos, the status videos from a backup server that I've been making. So if you want context, um, you can watch those. But this is sort of separate, so that's why I wanted to make it just a separate video. Um, I just want to address something that I've been asked a couple times, um, and I've sort of been told a couple times that you, you, know, you should never use ZFS on a server that doesn't have ECC memory. And um, the reason that a lot of people say is, oh, you know, if you do a scrub and there's, you know, a, a bad bit of memory, um, it will completely trash and destroy all the data on your pool, um, you know. And I just want to sort of disprove that. Um, that's not how scrubs work at all. Um, that's not going to happen pretty much. I mean, the probability is so incredibly low, and I'm going to explain why. Um, I'm not saying that you don't need ECC memory. ECC, ECC memory is incredibly highly recommended. Um, I recommend it if you're doing a production environment because ECC memory will help protect your data um, from certain things, but it's not going to help protect it from scrubs as much as it may sound. Uh, and the, it just it comes down to probabilities and it comes down to the way that ZFS scrub works. So what, what the people who sort of are misinformed think happens is ZFS reads data from uh, from the pool uh, it gets corrupted by a stuck bit or something in RAM, then you know the checksum fails. So then ZFS does you know a correction and writes the cor corrupted data back to disk. That's not how this works. So uh, I just want to go over the scenario and, and and how unlikely this really is. So let's say that you have um, a perfectly valid pool. There's no corruption on it whatsoever, and we're reading data and. ZFS reads a block from the disk, puts it in RAM, and it happens to be that that address of RAM has a stuck bit, which corrupts the data in it. Either corrupts the data or the checksum, doesn't matter which one. ZFS does a computation, data does not match checksum. Okay, there's corruption. So what ZFS will do is it will look at its redundant copy. So either its backup copy in the case of a mirror, or its parity information in the case of RAID Z. And it's going to read that data off disk, and it's then going to do a checksum computation on the the backup data and if the checksum computation matches then what it'll do is it will write that um, that you know that backup copy to disk but the thing is it's overwriting valid data with valid data so you don't lose anything so other than it you know using a, up a uh, you know a couple of a couple of extra disk cycles um, and maybe you know marginally slowing your scrub it doesn't really affect anything. No data loss. Okay. The next scenario, ZFS reads um, a block off the disk. It gets corrupted by a bad bit in memory. It goes to the parity information. It loads that into memory. And it just so happens by you know, random chance that it loads that into another block of memory, which is also messed up. Let's say your RAM is really terrible. And then it does the checksum computation and it fails there. So both your original copy and your redundant copy both are corrupted. Well, in this case, ZFS can't do anything. It doesn't have enough information to re repair the data. So it'll mark it as being irrecoverably, um, permanently uh, errored. And uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's corrupt. But the thing is, it doesn't write anything to disk. The data on the disk is still valid under both circumstances, which means if you try to read that data back at a later date, or you replace the RAM and do another scrub, when you do the next scrub, it's going to check the data and go, oh, it's actually not broken, and it's just going to clear the error. So again, you haven't lost any data. So the only circumstance where you can really lose data due to a scrub and bad memory is if you have a hash collision. And a hash collision is basically where bad data checksums to the same checksum as the valid data. And there is an incredibly low probability that this is possible. So the scenario that would actually cause data corruption is you read data, puts it into memory that's uh, you know bad, the checksum is invalid, it looks at the parity data, puts the parity data in memory, the parity data gets corrupted, but the corruption is in such a perfect way that it um, passes the checksum. The checksum has a, a collision, a hash collision, such that the data looks, according to ZFS, as if it's correct. So then, and only then, will ZFS take that invalid data and put it um, back to disk. In fact, it'll write it to both places. Uh, no, it'll, no it'll, it'll just write it to one place. 
So in that situation, you have now silent data corruption on, on your disk. But the thing is, the probability that this happens is so incredibly low um, that you almost, almost don't really need to worry about it. Because first of all, you need the probability that A, um, it loads a block into you know broken memory. And then the second thing that has to happen, the second probability is you have to you know add the probability on that the net that the actual parity data goes into another block that's also got you know memory problems. Uh, and then the next probability you've got to add on to that is that there'll be a hash collision. So you need all these three things to happen um, in sequence. And the probability of each is incredibly low, but them all happening together is incredibly low. It doesn't matter what hashing algorithm you're using, whether it's Fletcher 2, Fletcher 4, SHA-256, it doesn't matter. The probability is still really low for any of them. Some it's lower, but it really doesn't matter. You, you're, you're very unlikely to end up corrupting data by doing a scrub. Now, like I, I said, ECC memory is still important because you can still, uh, you can still corrupt data when you're writing it to disk. Right? If you have data in memory and you want to write that to disk, if you um, if, if you have it in memory and then it gets you know a bit gets flipped in memory before ZFS does the checksum computation and puts it on disk, then yes, of course it's going to be corrupted because ZFS doesn't know any better. ZFS just takes what's in RAM for face value and assumes it's valid. So now you've you've got silent data corruption and no, neither you know that there's a problem or ZFS knows that there's a problem and none of you can do anything about it. Um, the only way that you'll ever find the corruption is if you actually check, you actually um, you know, open the file and find the corruption. So yes, ECC memory will help you there, um, but during a scrub, it's, it's unlikely to matter that much. It's not like doing a scrub is just going to you know, corrupt all of your, your, your data. That's just not the case. And the thing is, due to memory management, due to the way that the operating system manages memory, it's not using the same, the same bits of the same um, addresses in memory um, all the time for every block it pulls out a disk, which means that you may only, you know, even even if you do have, let's say, a bad, um, you know, a, a bad address in memory, you may only have one or two blocks in your entire scrub that actually makes it into that block of memory at all. So it's it's the probability is just so low. Um, it's just, I mean, it's not something you really need to worry about. I would worry far more about things like bad SATA controllers. Um, you know, ECC memory for writes to disk, but but not for scrubs. It, it it just the probability is just so incredibly low. So I just wanted to sort of clear that up. Um, that's that's my stance on um, non ECC memory and scrubs. It's not really going to just destroy all of your data. So um, yeah, um, I think that's all I really wanted to say. So um, yeah, that that's it, yeah. If, if if you mention you know why don't you have ECC memory? In the comments, that's my explanation. It's not terrible. I mean, the thing is, it doesn't matter how you store data, how many copies you have, what it's stored on. It doesn't matter. There is always a probability your data will uh, you, you will suffer catastrophic data loss. It doesn't matter. I mean, because the thing is, at the end of the day, there is always a probability for something, right? It doesn't matter if you have your data replicated on every server in the entire world there's nothing that's going to say okay you know meteorite doesn't or meteor doesn't hit the earth and you know the whole earth goes up into flames like there is there is a probability for that right there's always a mathematical probability that your data no matter what you do is going to get lost and it's simply what probability of data loss are you okay with are you know do you think is acceptable um the acceptable risk basically so for me using non-ECC memory is an acceptable risk based on the cost um, that it would cost me to to actually get ECC memory. So that's 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 all I want to point out. Um, this video is far longer than it really needs to be. So yeah, that's uh, that's my stance on uh, non-ECC memory in ZFS. So hopefully that was uh, somewhat informative. Um, thanks for watching.